All right, hey AP Chemistry. So Amy asked a question about question 104 in chapter 17. This is page 833, and it's related to precipitation and KSP and Q. So let's look at this question. Predict whether a precipitate will form if you mix 175 milliliters of a point molar solution of KCl with 145 milliliters of a 0 0.0015 molar solution of AgNO3. Identify the precipitate, if any. Now, just in case if we forget or don't know what the word precipitate means, precipitate is a solid that forms that was not there before. So we're going to have to use, when writing this chemical equation, the symbol for solid to represent that a solid has formed. Um, I know you do want me to post a video on writing chemical equations, so we'll try and do this for this one. So... It says I added a KCl solution to AgNO3. Um, so I'm going to just write out that reaction. So I have AgNO3, and it's a solution. It's, it has a concentration, so this must be aqueous. Plus KCl is also a solution, so it must be aqueous. And I'm going to put a forward arrow for now. Now this goes way, way back in the day, probably chapter three, four, about how to write chemical equations. But just as an aside, all of my elements or polyatomic ions on the left, those are positive. So my K plus and my AG plus. And then my elements on, or uh, polyatomic ions on the right, those are negative. So this is minus one, minus one. So it just ends up being that I know that silver is plus one, NO3 is nitrate, so that's minus one. K is plus one, and Cl is minus one. And if I have a compound plus a compound, plus a compound, do we remember what type of chemical reaction this is if I have two compounds mixed together? This will be a double replacement. So I'm trying to slightly review writing chemical reactions in addition to predicting whether a precipitate will form. So now if I add these two together, in a double replacement, my positive switch place, or I say my negative switch place. So everybody switches partners. So instead of AG being with NO3, Ag plus is going to go with the Cl, because it's minus. And if that happens, then the K plus is going to go with the NO3 minus. So that's going to go over with this one, and this one's going to go over with that one. And so I'll write AgCl plus KNO3. Okay? Now, there are some solubility rules from, like, way back in the day as to what is soluble, what is not soluble. Just as an aside, all nitrates are soluble. So I know I'm going to put an aqueous here. And it just so happened that silver forms insoluble compounds, um, especially if it's with any of the halides. So silver forms insoluble compounds. So if you see silver with things, it's most likely going to be insoluble except look why is AgNO3 soluble because all nitrates are soluble and we could talk more about maybe recognizing what's going to be soluble or insoluble that's not really going to be important to this type of question but right now I'll know that my AgCl is a solid at this point I also know this because earlier in the chapter we read about certain solids that slowly dissociate in equilibrium. So I am going to write down over here to keep this for later that my KSP of AgCl is actually 1.77 times 10 to the minus 10th, whatever that means for us right now. Okay, so if I have this reaction, if I know this is solidifying, my net reaction is just my Ag plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous 
with AGCL solid. And in the textbook, you've seen it written this way, AGCL solid and equilibrium dissociation with AG plus plus Cl minus. This is kind of like a weak acid and how it slowly dissociates, but at equilibrium it will go back and forth. And so this has what's known as a KSP of 1.77 times 10 to the minus 10th. And so these concentrations that I get here of Ag plus or Cl minus are gonna kind of be like my Q value. So I just wrote this, so it's I wrote this uh, reaction in green as kind of a reminder about net ionic equations and what this means. So just as an aside here, AgNO3, remember I said this is ionic and it has two ions here. So AgNO3 is really just Ag plus and NO3 minus ions. So in the very beginning of the school year, we did this where we talked about the different ions and how they're formed and what they do. And so ions or ionic compounds split. They dissociate fully. Some ionic compounds have little solubility that they go back and forth between being in the solid state and the aqueous state. And that's where we get into this KSP. And so now we're seeing here that in the very beginning of this reaction, for AgNO3 and KCl, for AgNO3, I was given 145 milliliters of a 0 0.0015 molar solution. And for KCl, I was given 175 milliliters of a 0 0.0055 molar solution. So what I'm going to end up getting from here are concentrations of my ions. Remember I said that these ionic compounds, they could split up into individual ions, and they're going to have a concentration. So the reason why I wrote this out here is I could just say brackets Ag plus plus brackets Cl minus give me a certain brackets of AgCl solid or AgCl or just AgCl solid. And so when you read in the textbook and talking about how certain solids precipitate or certain solids dissociate slowly, you kind of were doing an ice table maybe, trying to figure out what, or my molar solubility or my KSP. This isn't that type of problem. This problem just talks about, well, if I have these concentration of ions present, will a precipitate form, all right? So let's try and make sure we can figure out my concentration of my ions. So if I have 145 milliliters of 0 0.005 mol 0 0.0015 molar AgNO3, I could get my concentration of a I could get my moles of Ag. Oh, so I have my this is my concentration is 0 0.0015 molar, but my moles remember is equal to my molarity times my volume in liters. So I could get moles of AgNO3, and that's going to give me my moles of Ag plus that that came from. Because if I look at the compound, for every one mole of Ag, I have one mole of AgNO3 and vice versa. So I'll do 0 0.0015 molar times 0.145 liter, because I divided that by 1,000. One, two, three. Oh, okay. And this equals... If I want to get the correct number of moles, I get 0 .0002175. 0 .0002175 moles of AgNO3, which is also equal to my moles of Ag. And I'm going to use that later. And so now I'm going to do the same thing with KCl. So if I have 175 milliliters of 0 0.0055 molar, I'll do moles is equal to molarity times volume in liters. So 0 0.0055 molar times 0 0.175 liters, and I end up getting 0 0.0009625. So 0 0.000. 0.0009625. And these are from an old calculation, so please check my calculations, of course, but this is the correct setup. And so this is my moles of KCl, 
which is also going to be equal to my moles of K plus. I'm oh, sorry, CL minus. All right, so from KCL, I'll get my CL minus. From AGNO3, I'll get my AG plus. And now these are my moles. If I want to figure out a Q, QSP is equal to the concentration of AG plus plus CL minus because KSP, just like from this equation, remember we don't include solids in the chemical reaction, so it's products over no reactant, which is just one. So KSP is the same thing, AG plus CL minus concentration, and we already know that value. We're trying to find Q here. So I will need the concentrations of both these ions multiply times each other to get my Q, and I'm going to compare it to K. So I added these two solutions together. So in doing that, when I add them together, I get a new volume of 320 milliliters. This many moles of Cl- is in 320 milliliters, and this many moles of Ag plus is in 320 milliliters. So now if I want to solve for the concentration of Ag plus, it needs to be moles over that new liters. And if I want the concentration of Cl- minus, it's equal to my moles over new liters. And remember, we did the same thing with the titration. I could take 10 milliliters of this solution or I could take 20 milliliters of that solution. The amount of moles in that solution is constant. I could add as much liquid water I want. Those moles are going to remain constant. So the moles are the same thing. I'm just changing the concentration because I have it in a new volume. So if I bring the moles back, 0 0.0002175 moles, and I divide it by my new con my new volume, which is at 0.32 liters, 0 0.320 liters, I get, and I kind of simplify this, I already got this concentration earlier today, I got a concentration for Ag plus at 6.8 times 10 to the minus fourth molar, and then for Cl minus, I plug in these moles too, 0 0.0009625 moles divided by the liters, which is 0 0.320 liters. And I get, earlier today, I got 3.0 times 10 to the minus third. 3.0 times 10 to the minus third molar. Okay? So you can check my values, check my work. These are my concentrations of my ions. If I plug them into my QSP equation, if I multiply these concentrations together, they're going to be equal to my QSP. So 6.8 times 10 to the minus 4th molar times 3.0 times 10 to the minus 3rd molar. And earlier today, I got a Q value of 2.0, and I, I'm not, I don't have like the correct sig figs here, but it's cool. Um, 2.04 times 10 to the minus 6th. That's my QSP, and it looks like my QSP is actually larger than my K. And so, if that happens, if my Q is larger than K, for this case, I have a super saturated solution, and a solid or a precipitate will form. And if you look on page 815 they, um, of your textbook, it explains what the Q is greater than, the Q is equal to, and the Q is less than means. Okay? So, all in all, I did review a bit about how to write equations. I spent the first like 10 minutes talking about how to set up the equation and then how from the equation you have the ions. So how I was able to get my moles of Ag because my moles of Ag was one to one with the AgNO3. So I spent a good amount of time trying to do that. In general, to solve for this problem, I needed to get the concentrations of the ions of Ag and Cl minus to see if AgCl will precipitate. Once I got those concentrations down here, if I multiply both by each other, if I compare that Q to a known KSP value, 
if I could compare them, if Q ends up being greater than K, it is insoluble. So I'm hoping that this video was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns or comment on the video or the, in the Remind if you need any further help.